Hey guys, I'm your host, Point Icarus, and my co-host, Nico, aka Bitbolt, will join us in a couple of minutes. Um, well, welcome to another episode of Simply Bitcoin, a daily weekday show recapping the Bitcoin news, sales, price action, and of course, no shit coins, because after all, it's Simply Bitcoin. Well, it's finally Friday, August 7th, 2020, and we are going to dig right into our Clark Moody dashboard. Clark Moody, man, you are the man. This is a crazy dashboard. Let's get right into it. Let's take a look at the block height, the price. The Clark Moody dashboard. It's just become part of the daily rhythm, man. The, right. daily, the daily rhythm. Yeah, it's genius. Okay, so block height, 642,701. The price, 11,576. And looks like the GBTC premium took a little bit of a tumble. We're back down to uh, 17.8%. Yes, sir. It's finally it's starting to look a little bit more reasonable at last. All right. What else were we, uh, what else were we looking at here? Okay. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, total, total capacity. capacity for Lightning. 969 BTC. And then the chain re rewrite, rewrite days. Which is, yeah. I would say, chain security. It's at 525. Uh, where are we going for that? Over All the here? way bottom. Bottom. Where it says chain. So right next to your right, there it says go. chain security. Yep. All right. Well, you know what? We should have added that to our favorites. Absolutely. You know? Because that's an indication of strength. So I Definitely. like it. Like it. Well, that's our, uh, you know, that's our intro for that piece. And uh, we're going to head right into the daily, the daily fail. fail. Yeah. And this is, this is definitely a, uh, a good one. Um, here. I'm so sorry. All right. We're going to kick it off with, uh, with this right here. Pierre Rochard's tweet, okay? He wants to independently calculate the money supply because the history of money is essential. So, uh, essentially, just repeated, uh, repeated cases of fraudulent inflation. Uh, Lightning has nothing to do with this. Uh, why are the most sophisticated Ethereans so poorly educated? So there's been uh, like just a total storm today of, of total ETH bashing. Uh, and specifically, the, the point being that the supply is unverifiable or not necessarily that it's unverifiable, but that it's... Um, let's just say that no one's results are the same. So, um, yeah, so this is really the, uh, you know, kind of the, the beginning of it and give me another sec here. All right. So there's like this hardcore ether who always likes to post this kind of stuff. Um, but it's really about this, this post here. Okay. About how the fact that it's not verifiable is, you know, it doesn't really matter, you know? And he go and uh, last MJS.eth goes on to say, I'm not sure it matters it can, uh, if it can be super easily calculated. The most important thing is that inflation deflation is kept within reasonable bounds as long as this can be measured somewhat accurately. Which is, that's, that, it's crazy that he said that because that's, <laughs> that's one of the, you know, the Fed is in charge of two things, right? And it's keeping inflation in check and keeping um, employment in check as well. So now you see, and, I, and you, I want to follow this up with the tweet that you said, um, which was, I think you said something, oh, yeah, super, I think you said something super intelligent, which is, um, I don't want to steal your thunder. So I'm going to wait to pull it up. So, but essentially, um, sorry, you essentially, you were basically saying like ETH is just replacing, you know, the federal reserve with, uh, look, ETH, ETH equals Fed 6.0. It's not yeah. money magicians anymore. It's unicorn shit without it. And it, it's exactly right because it's just a shittier version of the Federal Reserve because if they're worrying about, you know, if they can't even tell you the total supply of their coin, if there's no way to check that yourself, right, uh, then what the fuck's the point of using a fucking, of using a, using a cryptocurrency, right? Like what the fuck's the point? Which is, you know, like it, it, there's no fucking point. So in my eyes, I think that like, only Bitcoin because people run their own nodes because you have the ability to check the supply at all times. It, you know, 
in my opinion, I think Bitcoin is literally by definition, the only cryptocurrency that I see exists. The rest are different things. They're, they're different. For the most part, um, they, they don't need, if not 98% of the use cases, don't require a token to actually perform the work that they are claiming to perform. They can all simply use Bitcoin as a form of payment. Absolutely. And simply do the work that they're doing. But the thing is, is that uh, most projects wouldn't get funding if they didn't go through the, uh, the shady ICO process to be able to you know, get money for a technology that doesn't require a token. Um, Absolutely. But the reason why I said ETH was fed 6.0, right, is because just to explain a bit of background is because this is the fifth iteration of the Fed that this country is going through, in particular, the, you know, the U.S. Like, you know, we've already had four Feds before. So it's just a reference to the creature from Jekyll Island. So that's why ETH is fed 6.0. Would you consider that book a, like, a, like a Bible to Bitcoiners? Um, you know what, even not even just Bitcoiners, but like maybe even libertarians as well, but like just anybody first, I think it's anybody who appreciates the storage of their time value. Gotcha. You know? Yeah, I, I think it's, it's definitely about, you know, anybody who appreciates their, their time value storage will want to understand, you know, how their money works, how it's made, um, why it makes no sense and uh, why it's destined for failure. Unfortunately, it's, it's cool that, you know, Bitcoin kind of Trojan horses you into wanting to know about those things versus like in the fiat world, you kind of just accept things as they are, which is and it, that's exactly what I was hearing when I was looking at the, the ETH developer talking about Ethereum, you know, as long as it's relatively kept under control. Oops, I think I have a gap in the wall, at least if it's kept, you know, relatively under control. Yeah. Uh, you know, who cares, you know, what, ca who, what, what, what does it matter? You know, and it just, it, it just sounds like they're, they're inventing exactly what you said, the federal reserve 6.0, you know, it's just a revamp, man. It just is. So let's move on to price discussion. So price discussion, I mean, there's really not that much that has happened from yesterday. I was at like, but I did call the dip, you know, I, I, I kind of, I did. I'm going to give myself credit for that. You know, when we were pushing the 11,800, I was like, to be honest with you, and, and I think me and me and you agreed on this. I think that if we find some consolidation at these oh, levels yeah. for the next one or two weeks, that's really freaking bullish, right? You know, because you, once you start to once you start to establish a new supply, a new uh, a new support. And the fact that it's at a higher level that it wasn't before, you know, and Bitcoin's only been at these prices three times before, right? In, in its entire history, you know, if we can go all the way back, right? Um, you know, it, it obviously, you know, like once you go into the future, it makes these little bull runs appear like nothing in the long nothing. term. But, you know, it's really freaking bullish, man. This is the third time and it looks very strong. Right. And it we does, have it absolutely, it, it totally does. I mean, I love it. Yeah, dude, it's, it's super bullish. I'm very excited. We've got to stay grounded. We've got to stay focused. Right. It's absolutely. Not, right. It, it, it is after all, stay humble. Good, stack but, sats. Yeah, exactly. Like it looks good, but we're also being objective. You know, it's, we exactly. still have stuff to break through. Exactly. So <laughs> speaking about being objective, um, speaking about being objective, the next, piece of news that I would share. And I think it's significant because it's like that, that fear that, uh, that thing that I was touching on earlier in the week, which is Bitcoin has become, I would say it's been more accepted in the mainstream culture. Right. And, uh, Russ, I think he's an, he's an old football player. Um, but he's pretty well known. He says, you say we are a cult. I call us free thinking people. And of course he's think he's, he's referencing Bitcoiners, right? So, um, and you know, and, and, and now it's, now it's like become so, you know, I would say it's become part of the mainstream, but it's not really mainstream, but it's mainstream enough to get 500 people to understand the reference. It is. And I just want to add one piece. Okay. That Russ, like we obviously love Russ and Bitcoin and you know, it's awesome, but I, I find he's a bit of a tease because he says Bitcoin without saying Bitcoin. And it, it like, just, just say Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. you know? Like I know he says it sometimes, but like he, 
he does these like subversive tweets where he doesn't say Bitcoin and like you just need to put it at the bottom. <laughs> Absolutely. Like at least a hashtag, you know? Come but, on, you know? But and, you see, and we'll retweet it. <laughs> so like see, oftentimes I retweet him and I put Bitcoin. <laughs> it's like, that's you true. have to make it clear sometimes this is Sorry. true this is true no this is true man you're speaking the truth i like it i like it and i agree man i agree maybe if he wasn't so subtle but perhaps you know he's got some demons that he doesn't want to let people know yet yeah right maybe he doesn't want to stir the pot too much but i'm glad that we're starting to see some type of mainstream acceptance right which is kind of the the the, the theme that i was touching on this entire week, right? So I, I really like that, right? Yeah. Um, it's coming out. Bitcoin came from, you know, it's used for drugs. It's used for terrorists now to, you, if you buy Bitcoin, you save money, you know? So like, and I really like that, right? It's getting into the mainstream consciousness and it's, it really is like a freaking virus, man. And it's spreading and I love it. I'm, 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 I'm really liking this right now. So the next story is, I, I found it really cool, um, which is German authorities confiscate 30 million and Bitcoin from pirate movie site. I thought this was significant because, dude, this is a huge seizure, man. Imagine if they had the, the brains to, if the German government had the brains to keep, you know, that $30 million worth of Bitcoin and just sit on it for a couple of days. I mean, for a couple of years. What were they doing with B-Trash? It wasn't B trash. Oh no no no! This is just the. This oh is just no! Because it says Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash seized. Oh yeah! I yeah. Totally didn't read that part. Like, yeah. <laughs> what the fuck are they doing? But do you think, but do you think do you think they're saying that because he's accepting B trash? I don't uh, know. Ads? Huh? Maybe conspiracy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I don't so, think there was. Yeah. So, yeah, dude. It, this is a huge streaming service. Eight hundred eighty thousand pirated films and it streamed from autumn 2008 to may 2013 so so these guys were in early man they were yep. in early you you can call them og buy large amounts of bitcoin man i think it is a, i think it is a conspiracy it doesn't say bitcoin cash anywhere i think we're on to something i think we are on to something don't go on bitcoinstreetjournal.com because they're taking bribes from mr ver uh, but well we don't really know that but we're we're saying oh, it holy shit dude we were right it would be worth 256 million in today's dollars bro oh my god that's fucking huge if the yep, that really is huge if the government is smart enough they'll sit on that shit now keep in mind that's the bitcoin not the bitcoin cash yeah no it didn't say bitcoin cash in it's true. any it's of the, the article quotes it didn't. there was no bcash and the fact that there was Bitcoin.com, which is the, the Bcash site, right? Yep. Everywhere, it points to me that it was a conspiracy. Shady. It was shady yeah. as hell. Yeah, uh, right. But Phil, you got a really cool podcast coming in next oh, week. What are you absolutely. Talking, buddy? Yeah, definitely want to. Uh, so look, I'm actually interviewing fellow Bitcoin plebe Jimbo. Oh, and yeah? People who don't know Jimbo, okay? uh, I know a totally awesome name. Um, he is by far one of the most underrated, um, underrated taco Bitcoin carnivore plebes. And he is just awesome. He is very well spoken. He can explain uh, concepts like I find like no one else. And jokingly, I, or maybe not jokingly, he said to me, I, you know, because I asked him, like, how does he do it? And he said, because I have the best words. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, okay. So, yeah. So, anyways, definitely check him out. That's going to drop next Thursday. And that's going to drop on the, the fun, fun with Bitcoin podcast. And definitely go check it out, guys. Yeah, this is going to be awesome. Guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Tune in next week if you want simply Bitcoin and no fucking bit, uh, shit coins. See you guys later. <laughs>